Hello, I'm Josh. I'm one of the co-designers of Manways Power 2. Power 2 is a series of modules made by people with disabilities for people with disabilities. There's a bunch of modules, kind of like mine, have a really informative and easy to access pool online. So here is a taste of what I've created. I'm Josh, I'm a motivated person. I like doing gym, taekwondo, soccer, hanging out with friends and family, and smashing goals. So here we have Veronica project lead giving us a sneak peek into this project. So hello. Hi Josh, thanks so much for that lovely intro. It's really been a great experience working with all of you across this whole project. But I guess before we go any further, we should introduce the other co-designers who've been working on the project. So Josh, you as the first co-designer, you looked at the module that talks about inclusion and participation and how to really shape and form our lives by using certain strategies to become you know, more involved with our communities and explore our gifts and talents. One of the things I loved hearing about and seeing with you with the project was how you worked so well with those external project partners. Uh, Sue Ann, who was with the Projects for Purpose, who looked at working with you and creating all of the scripting and the text. And then the camera crew from Just Media Design, JMD. So can you talk to us about that experience with both of our project partners? Getting to know um, all of the project members and um, knowing I was in um, good hands, which led me to being myself. So we're not all strict on how to do things, um, they could take, let me kind of like coordinate everything and within reason, they let me yeah, decide what I decided what I wanted to do with the video. But when I went off the rails, they kind of re um, reveled me in, back in. So that was good. Previously, went to has been special school to do two presentations talking about my module and I did a, a presentation before that I went to um, the Sunshine Coast present to a group of people also about my module. Do you think Josh from your perspective that it's really important for us to be able to take power to you out and work face to face with our community members. Yeah, it's really important um, because many people don't have the opportunity to even hear of this um, project. So going around different places gives people the opportunity to, to listen to what other people have to say and to get motivated from this. What was really lovely to read was the feedback around how inspiring you have been for the parents. Your story of inclusion, participation, the way that you've just kept reaching your goals actually gave a lot of those families a lot of hope and made them feel more positive about the future. The most important part about anything is you have to the continuation of it going. And I think that's how I succeeded in a lot of my um, activities. The things that make me smile a lot, helping friends, helping family, succeeding in soccer, taekwondo, and smashing my girls in the gym. For you, Tiffany, one of the key messages in your video where we looked at how in your life you've gone about setting up intentional safeguards in your life to give you more independence, we saw you travelling all across Brisbane using public transport to the different activities 
that you like to take part in. Can you tell me when you started to learn and navigate your way around Brisbane on public transport. Do you remember how old you were? I probably 18, I think. So what are some of the places that you travel that you really enjoy using the public transport? I like travel on a train by myself. Um, I like going to Reggie Carriage. I travel to work to home. Can you remember how you felt having everyone there taking the video of you swimming? Um, happy. Yeah, yeah, you looked really happy that day yeah. too. And it was lovely, I think, for you and Brett, your coach, to be able to share your story. I like swimming, dancing, cooking, makeup, and nice parties. What happens when you're down there at these big special Olympics meetings? Monica, I go to um, d disco and dancing and have fun. Really good luck, Tiff. Thank you. Sure, you're going to come home with a medal. Thank you. She's not the slightest bit worried about travel. She's better in an international airport than I'll ever be. Brett's also teaching you to be a coach. Yeah. And, uh, you do coaching with the school kids, yeah. don't you? We'd like to think that she could take a pathway into coaching. That's really what I'm passionate about with her. Feeling safe gives her the ability to work to her best ability without worrying. So Tiffany's story is a little bit different to Sean's. Tiffany has explained to us that Life living at home with mum and dad gives her a great level of independence, but right. she's also quite comfortable with that. But for Sean, it was a slightly different narrative that was going to arise here. Sean, you actually wanted to leave home as soon as you finished school, am I right? Quite well, when 13, yeah. Like you weren't going to be hanging around with mum and dad, right? Remember, I got my got onion in the bed. Do you remember telling mum on the last day of school and you said, all done now? With school now, I'm moving out of home? Yeah. Did you put all your school books under my bed? Yeah, I didn't need them all. You didn't need them anymore? Yeah. Did it have anything to do with the fact that Dad is a really bad cook? Yeah, you can tell, well, you like on the fire, on the fire, on the weekend, you bear me. You better get my flatmate, Ali. You better, you're, you're better off living with your flatmate, Ali? Yeah. Rather than living at home with Dad and the bad cooking? No, you do. Not quite dope. Yeah, Dad? Nah. You can hit the old man now. Too much of an old man, Dad. Yeah. It's not like a grey hair, black hair. He's got grey hair. You used to have black hair? Yeah. It's grey now? Yeah. It's a really big topic at the moment around our whole community about living independently. Yeah, I own cookie. Yeah. Great yes. mate. Well, that was one of the things that we picked up in your video story. It was great that you said you wanted to go and live independently, right? Yeah. We started doing things like you needed to learn how to take the bus and you oh. needed to learn how to kind of cook your own breakfast yeah. and look after money and look after his things, mm. which he was already pretty good at in some ways, but he was used to us being able to be there and help him. First task was to get a job. Yeah, yeah I've so got, could... got two jobs, another one. Yeah, what are the two jobs? Uh, Mokotera. So Multicultural Australia. Yeah, and Nape. And then you you, after the COVID break, you're back at yeah. the Brisbane, is it the yeah, Brisbane right. Convention Centre? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, so you've right. you got your yeah. two jobs going. So that helps yeah. pay the bills, right? Yeah, right. At home, your brother was messy. Oh, I knew that. So you like to have a really neat house. I know, I liked it, man. You were doing all the laundry at home. You were so oh. helpful. And so I wasn't really impatient for you to move out of home. And I loved um, having you living with us when you were an adult but I knew that it was something he really wanted to do and that would be really good for him into the future and that he would probably grow more um, having that independent life. Justin, your module was absolutely fascinating as were all of the modules. You chose to have a discussion around the human rights so the module is my rights. One of the things that's come up within our discussions uh, since creating the how do you platform and now that we've taken it out into the community is the challenges that we seem to be finding with people actually accessing
the Power to You platform. Do you have any thoughts around what the potential barriers there could be, Justin? Well, the potential barriers for disabled people accessing the Power to You program is through the use of technology. Like, some people do not have knowledge of technology and how to use technology. So, for them, it will be hard for them to log on to the internet and know exactly what they need to do to sign up for a program and to register for the program. So a great idea is to basically have like in-person tutorials to help teach like disabled kids and their parents how to access these programs the moment that they're being given the program so when they go home from receiving the information they can be like oh hey um i know how to access this but can we shift now to your experience in creating your module with the creative team? Well, yeah, being able to work with a creative team and other creatives has definitely brought me a wealth of experience within the field of film and television because as an amateur filmmaker, I do have knowledge of film and television as a whole and being able to put that knowledge to use and work with the other creative to create like unique shots within our documentary, it is very much a good thing for me to be able to learn from the other creative as well. Do you want to discuss some of the inspiration around how you wanted to tell your story? Well, the inspiration around from what we wanted to tell the story was from the perspective of the some of the emotions a disabled person might feel within Brisbane itself. It's like you might feel isolated despite there being lots of people around you because of the fact that you have a disability. And that in itself is represented through a lot of these shots in the short doco. That is definitely a great experience because it allowed me to be creative. The co-design part of the project was also very much because we shared stories with each other. We talked about I had a passion for human rights due to the fact that I am both gay and disabled. It makes it made me someone able to look at two different minority groups and basically be able to combine the experience to understand more about the overall experience of people with disabilities and gay people. Both experiences have equally valid ideas to add to the conversation. And having both sides of the coin, mainstream and disability, to, is something that enriches us all and makes us all understand how we can live our lives better as people. What I'd like to see happen is obviously equal rights for disabled people, like proper equitability towards disabled people. Like, we're given support, but we are treated and given the same opportunity as able-bodied people. As you're aware, Justin, we took the exploration of human rights a little further with Olivia's work, where Olivia's module, My Decisions, looked at the ways in which Olivia needed to work extremely hard with her supporters to gain back choice and control over her life. So, Olivia, would you like to share with us some of your experiences, not only within making the project, but perhaps some of the events that led up to you being able to speak from experience about the way in which you needed to claim your human rights back? We had the public guardian and public trustees to stop the conflict between the parents. And at the end, I didn't kind of need them anymore because I have my mum and my sister 
with me and they help me in life in general they will always be there as well i have also lovely support workers i decided to keep skating competitively and to live independently in a flat of my own these were both things that people said i should not do because they were worried about me but i knew that although there might be times when things did go wrong i wanted to take risks my family friend saw a ad on tv for the Calandra roller drone and um and it was a rainy day and my family friend said do you want to try skating and i'm like okay i'll give it a go like by the end of the session, I was really adamant that I hated it. I wasn't going to do this ever again. And so the following weekend, it was raining again. And I said, can we go skating? So from that ever, can we go skating again? From that day onwards, I had lessons and started to compete. It's nice to compete again and just hang out with my friends there. When you were making the animation, what sorts of things did you do in the co-design session when you were making them? We were talking about friendships and people important to us and for them to be there for me when I need them most. Can you tell me about that process, about choosing your character and avatar? It was great to see me as a animation avatar. I'm not that technical on creating stuff like that, so it was pretty good. It's been really fun to have this opportunity so the public knows what we can do. The Power to You program has given me a voice, and that is very important. And for everyone watching, I hope this program empowers you to find your own sense of self, to find your own way through the world, and to simply enjoy yourselves in your life. People with disabilities, we can stand up and we can say, we are here and we're not going anywhere. In this Power To You project, I've learned how to become more confident within myself. Now it's, now it's your turn to be confident in yourself.